On creation's morning, an all-powerful God flung the glittering stars against the velvet of the night. He holds the seven seas in the palm of his hand. He measures space with his fingertips. He weighs the mountains in a scale and the hills in a balance. The God that we serve has total control. He said, let there be light. And in that moment of time, darkness was shattered and conquered forever. His son, Jesus Christ, walked upon the raging sea of the Sea of Galilee, and he held the winds in his fists and said, peace be still, that's control. That God is in control of planet Earth and he can be absolutely in control of your life if you'll let him. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. Stop worrying and start living. Worry proves that you don't believe God can take care of you. Worry is faith in fear. Worry is faith in fear. The two words in the New Testament from the mouth of the apostles, fear not, fear not, fear not the past. Why? Because your past has been forgiven and forgotten. Fear not the present. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Joshua 1 and 9, be not afraid for thy God is with you wherever you go. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Death has been reduced to a shadow. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Psalms 27 and 1. Hebrews 13, 6, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do with me. Fear not death. The Bible says, I am he who was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Fear not sickness, because this is the book of the great physician. Fear not poverty, for it is the Lord that gives you the power to get wealth. Fear not other people. The Bible says, I will make your enemies to be at peace with you. You will climb the impossible mountain. I'll give you the ability to defeat the impossible foe. One thousand shall fall at your left hand. Ten thousand shall fall at your right hand. David said, I will fear no evil. Why? Because God Almighty is with me. That's why. Worry is trust in the unpleasant. Worry is assurance that disaster is coming. Worry is believing in your personal defeat and despair. Worry is a polluted stream that flows through your brain, that drowns hope and optimism, that kills faith. Worry is interest paid on trouble that never happens. Think about that. One old man said, and I quote, most of the trouble I've had in life never happened. How many of you have worried yourself silly about something you just knew was going to be disaster and it never happened? Worry enters our life through thoughts. But the Bible teaches us to cast all of our care on God because he cares for us. Life is real, and we never know exactly what's going to come our way, but we do know God. We don't have to live in fear because He's with us, and He's on our side. Well, worry sees the problem, but it doesn't see God. I don't think it's wrong to see the problem. Matter of fact, I think we should look at our problems squarely, and then we need to tell them where they stand in relationship to God. Worry sees the problem, but faith sees the God who can handle the problem. And that's what we have to do. And whatever situation you're in right now in your life, whether it's something with your kids or your marriage or your finances, or you think you're never going to recover from your past, or you're fighting with some kind of an addiction or some kind of a, a sin that just keeps trying to cling to you, whatever it is, you have to know that God is greater than any problem that you have. And you have to not worry because... When you pray and then you worry, the worry nullifies your prayer. Prayer is something you do instead of worry. If we pray and then worry, we're saying with our mouth that we're depending on God, but we're saying with our actions that we don't really believe that God's going to come through, so we're going to worry and have a backup plan just in case He doesn't. 
We don't have to know what God is going to do. We don't have to know when he's going to do it. All we need to know is that he is and he has a plan. And at the right time, not our time, but at the right time, God will execute that plan. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you something that's just bubbling up in my heart right now. God is working in your life, every single one of you. God is working in your life right now in ways that you cannot feel, don't see, and don't understand. And everything that, that we go through, we need to lift up our voice and say, God, I believe you're working in my life right now. I'm expecting something good. And God is with you in your situations. Some of you are in very difficult situations. And yet in the midst of that, you have joy and peace and you have hope. And only God can give us that. God is with you. Just because you have a problem, that does not mean that God has abandoned you. God is with you. Jesus Christ made the profound statements about worry that the world has ever heard in Matthew the sixth chapter. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon, all of his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Simple, profound. God gives you what you need. And I'm sure that many of you have things looming out there in the future that you know is going to require answers. And you don't have those answers. But you know what? The greatest way that you can show faith in God is to refuse to worry about it, refuse to think about it excessively, and every time it comes to your brain, just say, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know the God who does know what I'm going to do. And that's when we get over into the miracle realm with God, where he can do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that we could ever dare to hope, ask, or think. Many of you have got a wonderful testimony in your life of what God has done for you. And God has brought you some, from some places that nobody would ever thought that you could have recovered from. And of course, I have that same testimony myself. And I'm telling you what, God is no respecter of persons. His promises are not for somebody else or an elite few. They are for you. He is here right now. And he is taking care of your situation. You don't have to worry. God will do one of two things if you have a problem. He will either remove the problem, which is always our first choice. And usually the only thing that we think we can even be remotely satisfied with. He will either remove the problem or he will give you the strength, the grace, the ability to go through the problem. Now, I know we don't like the going through part, but I'm telling you, if you can say, God, I know you'll do one of two things. You're either going to remove this, you're going to move it, you're going to take it away, or you're going to give me the grace to deal with it. And if we can trust God enough to leave that choice up to him, because if he lets us go through it, then he's got a purpose in mind. There's something we're going to get out of it that we need. Trusting God is wonderful. It's so wonderful to just say, I don't understand this, but I believe God's going to work it out. I do not understand this. It hurts so bad, I feel like I can't stand it. But I believe that God is going to work it out. Some way, somehow, I believe that God is going to work it out.